Well, I've been doing art professionally for about 35 years now. My initial thrust into the arts outside of undergraduate work um, was in Italy in 1985 when I followed a dream to go to Pietrasanta, Italy and learn how to carve marble in the place where Michelangelo and all the Renaissance artists went to carve because that's really the seat of it, where they quarried the marble back in the 15, 1400s. And I met my husband there, Omri Amrani. And um, so I learned, you know, the traditional way of carving marble. And before that, I had done figure sculpting in, at the Art Institute with um, Eldon Danhausen and also studied at University of Colorado with um, Ann Courier, although she was not figurative, she was more abstract in the ceramics. And then in, um, I also studied at the University of California with Manuel Neri figure sculpting. So I brought to Italy my background of working with models and working with the figure, and the figure has always been my focus. Um, so since then, I, you know, I've experimented a lot and, um, you know, just went into, my husband and I built a business uh, for monumental sculpture in bronze, monumental works, mostly icons, sport icons, and also we did a lot of veterans memorials as well over the years. And we built that business when we moved back to Chicago. Um, there are several artists in our studio that are professional sculptors and artists, and they do their own commission work under the umbrella of our studio as well. Well, a lot of the commission work that we've done, I mean, some of the icons that we've done in Chicago, Michael Jordan, um, Scotty Pippen, um, lots of announcers, the, the um, Stan Makita and Bobby Hall, um, the Bears, George Hallis, and um, and then for the Adler Planetarium, this is a bust of Jim Lovell, but we did a hall installation, which included glass, granite, bronze, steel, and light. I've always been interested in space and science and, and anatomy. Anatomy was my first interest, I think, for my figurative sculpture. I, I dissected in, um, when I lived in California at, in a program in Marin County, just to learn about the connection of the tendons to the muscles so I understood the body more. Um, but I was also interested in space and physics and you know the invisible world of particles and um, kind of how we came to be. Um, so going back to your question about what the difference is with commission work, like for example, the Rosalind Franklin sculpture that I did for Rosalind Franklin University that had a very specific agenda of sculpting her and you know the idea of her discovering DNA, she holds the image that she discovered, the radiology uh, image of the DNA molecule. And then University of Illinois, they wanted women in engineering, so I designed a sculpture, life-size bronze of her basically touching a screen, kind of a wavy screen, you know, where we're going in the future of, with computers and artificial intelligence. And all. Um, my personal work is more about what my own exploration, um, what I'm looking to express, and some of the process-oriented work, whether it's in 2D or 3D, whether I'm working with inks or oils or clay, it's more about working in the moment. You start out a two-dimensional piece with mark making in an abstract way, and then do layers, and you're kind of reacting to your last mark on the paper, and you find images that you can read into, and you develop them 
in sculpture, if it's a big clay blob and you just start sculpting and you know a head comes up and a figure comes up and you are responding to the moment. You are not coming in and imposing an agenda on the medium. The medium kind of speaks to you. And one thing that inspired me with the artwork at all is how figures come alive through the clay or figures on in an oil painting. So there's a dialogue that goes on between you and the medium. There's these small studies that I was doing with inks on paper, you know, where you create all these marks and you limit your palette like black and whites. I did like a series of black and whites. And I just started experimenting with gesso and ink and layering and some collage. And it just, there, it was like its own language. It started to come alive and I wanted to just keep doing them over and over again and see where it would go, repetition. Um, there's another piece, Round and Round, which I actually did before the exhibition, years before, but I felt it was very apropos. It talks about the cycle of life, uh, three figures that kind of look abstract in a sand uh, metal bowl. And it just talks about, you know, birth, death, rebirth, you know, this cycle that we're in, and you could, coordinate that with the idea of, you know, religions, Eastern religions that, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism that you are reborn over and over again until your soul exhausts itself or does it need to come back to earth? I don't know. You know, that's interpretive. But definitely philosophy and religion have an influence uh, on me in terms of how I look at the universe. So some of the ideas of astronomy and space and images that came back from the Hubble telescope and also now the James Webb telescope are amazing that we can actually bring those back to Earth. I don't know if the colors are completely accurate in that or whether they add colors, but they're just stupendous and inspiring as heck. Uh, years ago, I also, after I finished my master's degree, I went back to school in 2013, Art Institute in Boston, Lesley University. Um, I got together with this scientist from the University of Chicago, who his expertise is black holes. So we designed a walk-in installation uh, based on the black holes, but it was fascinating listening to him, Emil Martinek, um, talk about you know, the research and his research in black holes and what makes up a black hole. I just find it, you know, fascinating because I think the universe is infinite. I, I did base one of my installations that I did at, uh, for my master's degree, it was these three hexagons hanging amid uh, an atmosphere. You walk into the space and the mark making on the walls was based on the movement of particles in space. And then I kind of reiterated it with the wire that I wove around these hexagons. Hexagons are patterns in nature, whether it's found in bee honeycombs, uh, snowflakes, DNA, it's, it's repeated. So I used the hexagon as a shape. So I think in terms of color, you know, painting in oil is luscious, right? You, you work with colors and that inspires using other colors and you're so constantly feeding off each other. In terms of the sculptural aspect, clay is very sensual, especially water-based clay. It's like, you know, you take a big sack of it and pound it down and you're moving it with your hands and it just, kind of like takes on its own life. It's, it has a lot of life to it. 